What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So if you're in the market for a new Android device and you don't wanna spend nearly a thousand bucks on one, the new Google Pixel 7a and Samsung Galaxy A54 5G are both great options. In fact, these phones are so close to their flagship counterparts now that it almost doesn't even make sense to spend more. The new Pixel 7a has 90% of the specs and features that Google's flagship Pixel 7 had when it launched last fall, while Samsung's A54 5G looks so similar to the S series now that you probably couldn't even tell it apart. The decision to ditch the flagships I think is an easy one nowadays, but the decision between these two mid-range phones, that's a pretty tough choice. So in this video, I'm gonna go over everything you need to know about the Pixel 7a and Samsung A54. I'll talk about what sets these phones apart, why you might want to get one over the other, depending on maybe how you use your phone or what features you value most. And hopefully this helps you make the best purchase decision if you're considering either one of these for yourself. So first things first, let's talk price. The Pixel 7a just launched last week, and its full retail price is $499. There were some $50 off pre-order promotions that have since expired, but chances are in the coming months, you'll likely be able to find a good deal on this phone either directly from Google or from the major carriers that are selling it. Samsung's A54 has been out for a couple of months now, and its full retail price originally was $449, but actually Amazon has this phone listed at the moment for $375, and the GSM-only US version of the phone is darn near $350. It's quite a bit cheaper than the Pixel, for sure, even if you got it at the full retail price, so that's definitely the first major consideration. And if you want to do some comparison shopping of your own, I'll leave links down below in the video description to where you can get these phones at their cheapest current prices. Physically, these two phones differ quite a bit with their design and their form factor, obviously, but the first big difference actually is with their size. The A54 is the larger of the two. It's a 6.4 inch device. That's the screen size. The Pixel 7a is a 6.1 inch device. However, the actual dimensions of the phones as a whole are pretty close. So in the hand, it doesn't really feel like the A54 is three tenths of an inch larger. It's really only just a smidge taller, if anything. Now these phones have similar black borders that frame the display, though Technically, the Pixel has a lesser screen to body ratio, which also contributes to its similar physical size, but smaller screen dimensions. The difference really isn't much. Both phones have a similar center selfie camera up top, and all in all, while you do technically get a little more screen real estate on the A54, it's not as drastic as the official measurements make it seem. Around back, these phones also differ with their materials. So Samsung brought an all glass rear housing to this A54 for the first time, usually the budget and mid-tier A devices are plastic. That's the story with the Pixel 7a. It has a plastic rear cover, though honestly, it's pretty hard to tell a difference between the two. Both phones look and feel relatively premium. Design-wise, they both basically mimic their flagship counterparts. The A54 has an identical design and rear camera setup to the S23. The Pixel 7a has a similar camera bar and overall design to the regular Pixel 7. They're both IP67 water and dust resistant. Really, nothing about the fit and finish of either one of these phones says cheap or budget. Previous A-series devices might have been that way, but not so much anymore. And both these phones look great and are built well. Taking a quick look around at everything else, on the left side of the Pixel, you'll find the SIM card tray. On the A54, it's located at the top. The A54 does have SD card support for expandable storage. The Pixel does not. And actually, the A54 can also be specced up to 256 gigabytes of onboard storage. The Pixel has just one configuration option, 128 gigs. So keep that in mind, and both phones do come with dual SIM support via eSIM. On the right side, similar volume and power buttons positioned just inversely of one another. At the bottom, the same USB-C ports for charging flanked by a speaker on one side and microphone hole on the other. Secondary speakers are hidden inside the earpiece slits at the top of both phones just above the selfie cameras and around back, very different camera setups, which I'll talk more about in just a bit. Both phones do have in-display fingerprint readers, and from what I can tell, they seem to unlock the phones at a similar speed. Previous Samsung A-series and Google Pixel devices both had inconsistent and slow fingerprint readers, but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Though these aren't the ultrasonic flagship sensors you find on Samsung's S23, for example, but they're still good nonetheless. 
And both phones also have face unlock, of course, for that secondary unlocking option. So when it comes to the displays, size isn't the only thing that's different between these two phones. And actually, this is the first big difference that might just be a deciding factor. The smaller 6.1 inch screen on the Pixel 7a is a very respectable 2400 by 1080 resolution OLED panel with HDR support, packing in some 429 pixels per inch. The larger 6.4 inch display on the A54 is a Super AMOLED 2340 by 1080 resolution screen with HDR10 plus support at around 403 pixels per inch. And as far as the refresh rates, well, the Pixel is an adaptive 90 hertz, while the A54 is an adaptive 120 hertz. Now, I wanna just say that both these phones do offer exceptional viewing experiences for the price. Very much flagship caliper. Bold, bright, very colorful, plenty sharp too, though technically the Pixel has a higher PPI since it's a smaller device at the same resolution. And both phones are super responsive too, with their respective high refresh rates enabled. But arguably, the A54's display to me looks more colorful, is measurably more fluid and responsive at the higher refresh rate, and also seems to get much brighter too. The user controlled brightness at every percent on the A54 is obviously brighter than what the Pixel delivers. And that means you get less glare and a better overall viewing experience outside, especially and even indoors too with the A54. Again, that's not to say that the Pixel's display is bad. It's just that what you get on the Samsung A54 is that much better. Not subjectively better, but quite obviously better, measurably better. And in fact, this screen on the A54 is almost exactly what you get on Samsung's S series flagship phones like the S23. So in my opinion, I think the A54 here gets an extra point or two for its bigger, better display. Display. As far as the speakers, both phones have similar downward firing ones at the bottom and secondary ones at the top. Neither phone offers anything special or unique with the listening experience here, and in fact, I think they sound quite similar. The Pixel might be more clear and less distorted at max volume, if anything, but here's a quick sound sample from each so you can decide for yourself. With the internal specs and performance, along with the software experience, while both these phones are Android devices, they're the centerpieces of their respective ecosystems, Samsung versus Google, and it's almost akin to comparing iOS to Android. So powering the A54 is the newer upper tier Exynos 1380 processor, Samsung's own semi-controversial chipset paired to the Mali G68 GPU and the option of either six or eight gigs of RAM. The thing I wanna stress here is that the Exynos 1380 is not a flagship processor, unlike what's technically powering the Pixel 7a. Inside this phone is Google's own Tensor G2 chipset, the same flagship classified processor that was inside the flagship Pixel 7 last fall, along with eight gigs of RAM. And I guess for the A54 to have a comparable chipset, it would need to have had maybe the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, but it doesn't, which means that the Pixel 7a is a more powerful and more capable smartphone, which you can see by the Geekbench scores. Now, what's sort of interesting about this is that in North normal day-to-day -day use, opening and closing your standard set of apps, you're probably not going to notice a significant difference in speed and performance between the two phones. And in fact, depending on the app or the task, sometimes the Pixel loads stuff first, and sometimes the A54 loads stuff first. But in my experience, the harder you push these phones, the more apps you have open and running, or with gaming, for example, the more you'll see the Pixel 7a's performance advantage. I should also mention that my A54 here has six gigs of RAM versus the Pixel's eight gigs, so that's certainly another factor. Something else I know a lot of people will be jumping at, Samsung's Exynos processors have historically been known to overheat, throttle performance. They generally don't have a great reputation for performance or general reliability. The Pixel has had its fair share of overheating concerns over the years too, but I think in general, the Pixel 7a truly offers flagship specs at a fraction of the price. With the A54, you're paying for mid-tier specs at best that I actually think wind up 
diminishing a bit of the value to this phone by comparison. Also, Google's software support and updates do exceed what you get from Samsung for the most part. On the Pixel, you get major Android updates before anyone else. You get Google's special suite of software features too. Samsung has its own apps and ecosystem, of course, like I mentioned, but actually the A54 also is slated to get four major Android updates in its lifetime, up to Android 17, while the Pixel will seemingly receive updates through Android 16. So there's a bit of an advantage there in the form of longevity from Samsung. But I think overall, the reason a lot of people flock to Pixel devices nowadays is because of the software and performance. Year after year, the Pixel A devices have delivered just the best Android experience you can get for the price. And that's true once again on the Pixel 7a. So when it comes to battery life and charging, there's actually a few factors to consider here. For one, the Pixel 7a supports wireless charging. Samsung's A54 does not. The A54, however, is powered by a larger battery, 5,000 milliamps, versus the 4,385 milliamp battery inside the Pixel. The A54 can also be juiced up via a 25 watt wall plug. The Pixel supports just 18 watt wired charging. The A54, of course, has a bigger, brighter, and higher refresh rate display that seems like it might suck the life out of the battery faster, but actually, I found that the A54 tends to outlast the Pixel by at least an hour or two each day. And if you drop that refresh rate down and even the playing field, the A54 extends its lead in longevity even further. The Pixel does offer more in the way of battery saving options and usage pattern learning from Google, but for whatever reason, maybe the smaller battery size or more powerful processor, that software stuff doesn't seem to be enough to make up the difference. So if lasting through the day is your biggest concern, I think you'll find the A54 does have a noticeable advantage. Finally, when it comes to camera capabilities, I could beat around the bush and say that each phone offers a little something for everyone, but let's be honest, the Pixel 7a is far superior with pictures and videos compared to the A54. And again, it's not that the A54 is bad. The triple lens setup with its 50 megapixel main shooter, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and five megapixel up close macro is gonna be perfectly fine for most people. But the Pixel 64 megapixel main lens, 13 megapixel ultra wide, and all of Google's software and image processing that goes along with that just yields you another flagship caliper setup that isn't on the same level. The Pixel offers more camera capabilities across the board, more useful shooting modes and features that hint at it being a bit more professional rather than gimmicky. And the end result is an image that's incredibly detailed, accurate, and true to life. Samsung's A54 suffers from an oversaturated and overprocessed look by comparison, a lot less detail, and that's not unexpected for a mid-ranger, but it's just not on the same level as what the Pixel offers. And overall, I don't think this is surprising or unexpected or even controversial. If you want the best picture taker available in this sub $500 price range, the Pixel is and has been the device to get for some time, and that's the case once again here. The A54 is simply just a mid-range picture taker at best. Again, nothing inherently wrong with that. It's gotten better over the years. It's just still not quite able to compete. So if you're deciding between these two phones, the Pixel 7a and the Samsung A54, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. With the Pixel, you're getting the best software experience, flagship specs, and the top tier camera setup. All great things for this sub $500 price point. With Samsung's A54, you get a slightly better build, bigger, brighter, and more colorful display, better battery life, and at the moment, it's quite a bit cheaper, well under $400. To me, the Pixel 7a is the better smartphone, but the A54 is certainly the better all around deal or value for your money. If capabilities are what you're after, if you want as close to a flagship phone as you can get, I think the Pixel is your answer. But if you just want the best value, the best bang for your buck, the A54 is a ridiculously good phone for now $375. But what do you guys think? Which phone would you prefer? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.